On today's episode of Watch Jericho, we continue trying to drive the tow truck from Boston, Massachusetts to Washington, D.C. or Annapolis, Maryland, and then all the way back to Wichita, Kansas. But now we're adding a twist that makes everything worse. Let's go. Well, it's the next morning, and who would have known Annapolis, Maryland was this beautiful. It is amazing out here. That hotel room on the water was awesome. Balcony overlooking it. And this thing seems to be living. There's a few drops under the front end. So it's time to do another pre-flight. Looks like a couple drops from that hydraulic cylinder too. Let's check all our fluids again and get back on the road. Not really the road though. We're just going down the street. Well, now we've got the tow truck running again. We are here to do what we set out to do, which was pick up my newest car. We'll talk about that later. Load it up on this tow truck and drag it back to Kansas. You guys look pretty dirty right there. So let's see if everything works as described. It worked yesterday. You know Rich wasn't kidding. Here we go. Magical. We'll slide this thing all the way back. Try to get that nice approach angle here. It's not bad for six grand. Yeah, you guys didn't think I was gonna actually be using this on a trip home, did you? The Corvette costs less than this whole tow truck, you know, what a... It drives what? better too, I'm sure. It's probably, it drives pretty well. Yeah, I think it'll be just fine for this car. That's right on the money. All right, uh, I need to loosen up the winch here. Rich said it's the third one. All right. That's as loose as it needs to be. Yeah, I'm clean-ish now, and I yeah. tend to stay that way for a little bit. <laughs> well, I'm only... I'm only 20% clean. Don't let us down this time. It's all it has to do. Oh, look at that. So Anybody stealing it? That looks good to me. Man, this is actually pretty cool. This isn't a bad way to load cars when you're going to get a bunch of cars. That is. Probably still this way. <laughs> We're learning here. Learning on the job. Like a real tow truck guy, two at once. Getting better. Hey, I'm not gonna lie, you look like a pro. I, I don't know what I'm doing at all. Just, just over here pushing it. <laughs> oh, the wheel lift is kind of down, I think. No, it was all the way up. Okay, we're, we're good. Well, that's a successful first tow truck experience. Uh, you shouldn't have said that before you made it home, if we're being honest. <laughs> I just meant the load. I just meant the load. We're, we're not going to say anything else about the car <laughs> or the tow truck. Man, kind of sad to see her go. I got to chain it down. To an extent. Yeah, to an extent. What do you think I hope to? I don't know. Take your pick. The answer is always the control. <laughs> <laughs> no, chuck it to the pallet right there. You're good. That's a, it's honestly a really solid pallet. It is, I use premium screws. You use the premium pallet. Wow. This is super cool. Man, crazy to be driving across in a tow truck with an off-road Corvette. Well, the old tow truck was doing pretty well until I had to start climbing these mountains here in Maryland. And all of a sudden, it was not doing so well. Um, I was watching the tip gauge creep up and creep up, and then all of a sudden I lost like all my power getting ready to climb a hill. So there was an exit here. I don't know where I'm at exactly, but all I do know is uh, it's dinner time. So it looks like this is the perfect time for me to eat dinner, wash up, and then we'll get back on the road here in a few minutes after the truck cools down. Hopefully everything's okay. Uh, there's no smoke, no nothing, you know. I didn't see any issue with it like, losing transmission fluid and obviously it parked just fine in the parking spot 
So I really don't know what's going on other than it's just really hot. So I think as the sun goes down, we'll get, uh, you know, some boost weather at the same time because it's getting to like 72 during the day and this thing just can't climb hills. It can get moving no problem and it'll actually go pretty fast too, but it cannot keep going. Uh, if it has to climb a hill, it just struggles. So I'm getting down to like 45 mile an hour, holding up traffic, and I'd rather it be later, less traffic, more boost weather. So let's try that. Oh, mountain, something you take completely for granted when you're in a car or a nice new truck, it's no big deal to drive up a mountain. When you're in an old tow truck with a 7.3 with uh, over a quarter million miles on it, you don't get to take mountains for granted anymore. Now it's beautiful where I just stopped. Unfortunately, I had to stop because the temp was flying up on this thing. You can see all the smoke rolling out of it and you'd think it was coolant, but it's not. It's actually diesel because I had to stop and change the fuel filter because it wouldn't go up a grade at all. I was trying to climb one of the mountains and it was stuck at 25 mile an hour, which was horrible. So I thought there's gotta be something wrong. So I called the power stroke expert, Weston, and I was like, hey man, what could possibly be going on with this thing? Why does it have zero power? He was like, it's the fuel filter, it's fuel starving, or it's the ICP. Well, I can't find the ICP on this, the injector control, whatever. I, I don't know what the P stands for. Injector control pressure or something like that. It's different on the Navistar than it is on a power stroke. So I had no luck finding that. Anyway, I had to leave that alone. I tried to change the fuel filter. We bought one. Turns out the threads were wrong on the fuel filter and the correct one, of course, is way out. Like I couldn't get it in any reasonable amount of time, which was now. So I had to keep going. So I put the old fuel filter back in and I got out on the road. I climbed up that grade at 25 mile an hour. And then all of a sudden this thing ripped to life and it was amazing. It was going 65, adding power, going uphill. I don't know what's going on. I think it's because the temperature dropped like crazy. It's now like 58 degrees when it was 70 earlier. So uh, a 10 degree difference lowers what's probably 150 degree air, 160 getting shoved into that engine because there's no intercooler. It got way better. This thing started climbing like there was no tomorrow. And then I let out of it because it was so cold. I was freezing so I could close the wing window and it never came back. So I made it up this giant mountain going 25, and then I opened the hood, assuming I was gonna find coolant everywhere, which there is. Uh, the coolant overflowed a hair there. You can see where it's a little bit wet, but that's dried up. This is all diesel. I get out and it's dripping diesel out of this thing, and I think it still is, honestly. I can't, I can't tell what's going on, but there's some diesel dripping out of the, maybe the return line there. And anyway, that's what all that smoke is. And if you look down there by the uh, high pop, the high pressure pump, there is either oil or diesel literally everywhere. The valley is full, which is never great. You know, that really looks like oil. I think that pump might be leaking when it comes up and makes all this big power. It does, it smells like diesel though. It doesn't smell like oil. I tightened down the filter housing again in case I didn't get it tight enough. Uh, this time it's just absolutely buried. So I guess we're going to let this thing cool down. I'm going to rinse out the valley here in a minute with some water and we'll see if she'll get back on the road. If I could get out of these mountains, this thing would have no problem. It has no issue at all flying down the highway when it's flat. It's weird because yesterday it did great and today it just gave up the ghost. I think it's because it's loaded, but it's only another thousand pounds. I don't know. I do want to add some context to this right here. At this rest stop, I made it up uh, probably the third mountain, and this was the longest one. It must have been five miles uphill going at 20 mile an hour. And when I talked to Weston and uh, I said, like, this is where I'm at with this truck, I'm done with it. I have to stop driving now. I was beat, I was mentally beat, physically beat already because I'd already driven almost 16 hours. This trip ended up taking almost 36 hours total of driving with you know, basically no breaks after the first eight hours. And I'm just gone. And I said, Weston, can you get Gentry and Sons on the phone, find somebody that's close with a low boy and I will pay, like I would have paid anything to stop driving that truck at that point. I was ready to throw a couple thousand dollars at least at, at just getting it home. But 
Instead, we came up with a plan. Uh, Weston had Gentry and Sons standing by as well. And they said, take the south route because I was at the split. Basically, the highways diverge at Cumberland Gap. And I was literally like 10 miles from there. I knew I could make it that far. And he said, take the south route. That'll put you as close as possible to Gentry and Sons and see how far you can push that thing. Guys, it's 2.45 in the a.m. I'm at a Sheets somewhere in West Virginia. I'd like to put in one more hour. That's it, that's the whole update. Uh, the truck is running again, and it turns out, as long as you downshift, keep a bunch of RPM in this old power stroke, uh, sometimes, mostly second gear going up grades, uh, it will go 20 mile an hour up a mountain and have no issue. Uh, <laughs> it, well, I, when I say no issue, it'll sit at 210. And then on the way down the hill, I'll get back down to 180. And then when we climb the next hill, yeah, it just goes like that for hours and hours and hours. Um, at least now the hills have flattened out a little bit. I'm out of the mountains I was in in Maryland and on to West Virginia where it's just hills. And the rolling hills are perfect. I can maintain almost 55 sometimes. <laughs> so that, yep, that's the whole update. Uh, it's also blowing through diesel as you'd expect because it's flat like i can just leave it flat on the floor the entire drive and it's working what a drive i am tired well i drove all night long because it needed to be done since this thing can't climb hills like i said earlier uh, i figured i just have to go and go and go so i drove until 9 a.m pulled over set up a little bed here with uh you know some clothes for a pillow luckily i had something for uh, head padding there and went to sleep for an hour and then got back at it because I just want to get home with this thing at this point but it's running like a champ the power stroke is doing pretty well I am very impressed you just have to keep it flat on the floor we're talking like it's been 16 hours of just pushing the accelerator pedal down as hard as I can I don't ever have to let up and uh, I mean, maybe on really, really steep grades coming down, I have to let up. But other than that, I need it to build speed again to climb the next hill. So wide open throttle until your feet cramp and your legs hurt. So I'm gonna get out here at this rest area. Just got to Illinois. It's time to get out of this thing for a minute, walk around, go to the bathroom, you know, all the usual stuff. I am, I am feeling it right now. And there's nine hours left to get home. We're gonna, we're gonna do it though. At this point, we've used an entire gallon of 5W40 in the tow truck, and it is blowing through the oil. Another thing that's got me really worried about it, but we're just gonna keep going. Update, St. Louis, nothing more to add. Almost got DOT. It's the next morning, I'm back with the tow truck. What a drive, I was exhausted. I don't know how this arm can hold a camera because it was just extreme pain in both shoulders from driving this thing for so long. Now, we're gonna take this thing down to uh, its next home <laughs> and it'll be close by if we ever need to use a rollback for anything. So, if you have an idea that you wanna buy a tow truck, that's cheap and try to drive it back, uh, you know, 2,000-ish miles, please don't. It will be very painful. You should probably just buy one that's closer. The weather showed it wasn't gonna rain and I was worried about the Corvette and it looks like it rained. Not too much, but. Seats and leather, it's fine. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, the seats still look good. We're all right here. All right, let's get this out of here before it gets actually wet. And now our last thing to do with the tow truck, unload my off-road Corvette. We're gonna do that real quick, PTO on? Yep. All right, let's rock and roll here. Um, I'll let the winch out first and go disconnect that. Okay. Timberlay was nice enough to give us a factory lift point to hook that hook onto. <laughs> All right, we should be good to go now. The car is in uh, the parking brakes on, it's in gear, it's not gonna go anywhere. So we're just gonna go ahead and run it back. Two at once. Dang, it runs well. Yeah, it's actually super fast if you add some throttle too. Super fast. Should be about our limit right there. This is the way to get cars. There is nothing better than this. It is so cool. Except for the part we have to drive this. Well, yeah, I mean, there is that. <laughs> That's just part of life. Oh, 
That is tiny. Do what? It's a tiny little winch. Yeah, the little 5,000 from Harbor Freight. <laughs> I do appreciate that it has front and rear receivers. Yeah. That's pretty sick. Dude, this thing came with a Yeti cooler, and that cooler was like worth the price. <laughs> Power seats work really well. Okay. I wouldn't have thought anything different. That's a unit right there. This thing is awesome. Man, I cannot wait to take it off-roading, which we will do very soon. A rollback is amazing, guys. I don't know if you know this. <laughs> if you don't have a rollback, you kind of need one. Anyway, that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Huge shout out to Rich for selling me this. Don't forget to head on over to shop, watchjrgo.com for cool shirts, not like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do, and I will talk to you next time. And we're here at the tow trucks. Oh, the radio started playing at the worst moment. All right, we are here with the tow trucks new owner, Weston. Dude, you know how many cars I can steal with this bad boy? I can steal so many. We can repo cars instead of building. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, re repo, repo, repo. Yeah, without ownership. <laughs> All right, well, this thing was a fun adventure. It'll be around here if we need it. That was the deal. Good luck getting her started. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I imagine you know all the tricks now. I do. I've got uh, I've got this thing down pretty pretty well. Oh, dude, you were joking. The exhaust fell all the way off. Yeah, the exhaust. I, I think I hit a bump, and it it, it did kind of come out of the clamp. Though. It, it straight pipes itself. <laughs> You know, it's, it's a, it must it's, sound better now. You know what's funny is there was a, like an OBS Ford with a non-turbo power stroke going down the road. And for a while there we were just cruising beside each other and he's rolling pull all over the whole highway. This thing runs <laughs> I think we need to give her a tune or something. She seems a little bit down on power. If it had an intercooler, this thing would scream. Well, the thing is, is these, uh, they actually have tuners you can put in them because they're like factory 150 or 170 horse. Yeah. And you can turn them up to like 230 real real nice. If we had that and the bank's intercooler, this thing would fly. Oh yeah, perfect. Fly. Perfect. What do you think?